Let us remember and their country in war and peace, those whom we know and those whose memory we treasure, and all who lived and died in the service of their country and mankind. They shall not, they shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, 
life everlasting. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, who sent your Son to die that we might live, grant we pray eternal rest to those who gave themselves in service and sacrifice for their country. 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Daniel. At that time, Michael will stand up, the great prince who mounts guard over your people. There is going to be a time of great distress, unparalleled since nations first came into existence. When that time comes, your own people will be spared, all those whose names are found written in the book of those who lie sleeping in the dust of the earth. Many will awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting disgrace. The learned will shine as brightly as the vault of heaven, and those who have instructed many in virtue as bright as stars for all eternity. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. All the priests stand at their duties every day, offering over and over again the same sacrifices, which are quite incapable of taking sins away. Christ, on the other hand, has offered one single sacrifice for sins, and then taken his place forever at the right hand of God where he is now waiting until his enemies are made into a footstool for him. By virtue of that one single offering, he has achieved the eternal perfection of all whom he is sanctifying. When all sins have been forgiven, there can be no more sin offerings. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days, after the time of distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will lose its brightness, the stars will come falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then too, he will send the angels to gather his chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the world to the ends of heaven. Take the fig tree as a parable. As soon as its twigs grow supple and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. So with you, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the very gates. I tell you solemnly, before this generation has passed away, all these things will have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But as for that day or hour, Nobody knows it, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, no, no one but the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus has finally reached Jerusalem and the words we hear from Christ in this gospel today come at the end of a long discourse in which Christ is telling the people of Israel about the apocalypse, the end times. And as we're in the last couple of weeks of the liturgical year and as we begin, uh, as we prepare to begin the new liturgical year, the cycle of readings, our scripture, our liturgy at the, at the coming of Advent, we finish in the same way we started in last Advent, reflecting on the end times, on the apocalypse. And when we first think about this, we might be a little daunted, a little hesitant. The word apocalypse is a heavy word. It is full of dark imagery, death, uncertainty. And perhaps that's in being helped and aided by um, modern interpretations of the word apocalypse, Hollywood, media. We might think of nuclear holocausts. We might think of even zombie apocalypse. All types of films have come out recently, a television series about um, dystopian societies at the end of time and we are kind of obsessed aren't we as a, as a race when we think about it as human beings obsessed with the end times it's something that's always saturated our our culture our stories and because we're looking for something we're looking at the world around us and we're hoping that there's something more to it and that's what Christ is telling us 
in the scriptures today. The first reading is of particular significance because it's the first time in scripture, it's the first time in our holy text in which we have the promise of the resurrection, the promise of heaven everlasting. And Christ in the gospel, when he starts talking about this, these images of the sun will be darkened, will lose its brightness, stars will fall from the sky, even the very powers in heaven will be shaken. And throughout the rest of the discourse, before this little part, Christ talks about how kingdoms will be shaken, divided, fall, families will be torn asunder. It's all very scary stuff. But when we really have a, take a pause and look at this image, what Christ is describing, he's throwing creation upside down. Creation, it seems, will go back to when God formed creation at the very beginning, this kind of formless, kind of void, all this matter being thrown together. And Christ is using this very distinct image of the end times being like the very beginning because it is through the tearing down of what has been in that creation, the new creation will be built from, the creation of the heavenly kingdom, the resurrection. So when we take a moment to think and reflect on what Christ is saying, these aren't words that should scare us, but rather should bring us hope should bring us comfort. And hope is one of the key virtues, defining characteristics that we should all share as Christians, as members of the church. Hope. That first reading being the first promise of the resurrection. It's that little spark, that little light in our salvation history. And it burns and burns and burns until we have Christ himself, the word of God, the light of the world, telling us that all this will be done away with and all that will be left is his kingdom. And it is our job to hope, to hold on to hope. And is hope something that we pray for each day? Do we, as Christians, as Catholics, remember to pray for an increase in hope? You know, when we pray the rosary, those first three Hail Marys, they're actually prayed traditionally for an increase in faith, hope, and charity. Virtues, what we call the theological virtues. Faith, hope, and charity. Hope should define us. And we can see what happens when man loses hope. On this Remembrance Sunday, we see very clearly what happens when man loses hope. When we lose sight of God's kingdom, we see men throughout history, and we know that history can repeat itself. Therefore, it's something we must think about. We see men come forward and they say, I will build a kingdom, but I will build it as my kingdom, my image, my likeness, my designs, my structure. And what have we seen? Genocide, war, famine, Nazism, communism. We've seen generations lost and destroyed, being thrown at guns and cannons because of man's design. When we throw God out, the devil comes in. So it is our job today, as we pray for the war dead, from all wars, from across all nations, but of course, especially today for us, for those men who died in the service in, in World War I, those died from all across the empire, in the Second World War, all those across the Commonwealth and all our servicemen and women who serve today for Queen and country, for Britain and for world peace. We remember them especially. But today we also pray that we will keep hope, that we will look to the world, into the world and we will say that there is something better. There is something still yet to come. It is not our kingdom, it is not the promise of any political party, any president, any prime minister, any union, but the promise of God and his kingdom. The hope that all this will pass away and all that will be left 
is perfection. No anger, no squabbling, no death, no human designs, but God himself. So let us pray for those innocents, those patriots who lost their lives because of the designs of other men. For when evil entered into the world through the hearts of godless men, let us pray for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice that, they will never, that others will never have to pay that price again. Let us pray as Christians that our lives in our own small ways may be beacons of hope pointing to the heavenly kingdom, unafraid of the end times because it's not the end but the beginning of everlasting peace.
brothers and sisters, with obedience and trust that is placed before God the needs of the church and the world. For the Holy Church of God, may she be granted the gifts of peace and unity and always stand ready to greet the Lord when he comes in glory. Lord, in your mercy, for peace in the world, as we celebrate the Remembrance Sunday, may those in government and positions of leadership strive to promote just peace and seek an end to warfare and violence in all parts of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who work with the poorest in our society, encouraged by God of mercy, may they bring hope and dignity to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick at this time, at home, in hospital or hospice, remembering in particular those in injured in wars and armed conflicts. May they receive the strength to unite themselves to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, for those who have died recently, in particular in past and present wars, and armed conflicts. And for those who died in the service of peace, that they may gaze eternally on their creator and redeemer in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us ask Our Lady, Queen of Peace, to join her prayers with ours. Hail Mary. Full of, Full of grace. grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Lord of heaven and earth, look upon your people gathered in faith to offer you fitting praise. In your mercy, hear our prayer and fill us with your grace, so that we may walk in the joy of your presence. Through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Heavenly Father, that the sacrifice of Christ, who laid down his life for his friends, may raise all those who have died in war to the victory of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We pray Let us give thanks to the Lord. truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, and so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we, may, we, might, we all might live forever. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
to you, their foremost merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Marcus, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or the offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Gisogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to your God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith The 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By our communion with this sacrament, O Lord, grant us, we pray, fortitude in the cause of right. And may our remembrance of those who have died in war make us ardent defenders of your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Few announce, uh, announcements um, from our bulletin. Just a, draw your attention to um, the Mass that will be celebrated by the Bishop on Friday the 19th for the deceased clergy of this diocese an opportunity to come and pray for all uh, those priests who have served in this diocese and we pray that they have gone to their uh, eternal reward. So please do keep that in mind and that's Friday the 19th at 12.30. So if you look at the actual timetable of Masses, that's correct, the 19th, but in the actual um, information in the bulletin, it does say Friday the 18th, which is incorrect. So remember, if you do wish to attend that Mass to come and pray for the clergy who have gone before us, please keep in mind it's Friday the 19th. Also, um, we are now selling our, our Christmas, uh, parish Christmas lunch tickets. We'll be hosting a parish lunch, Christmas lunch, on the 14th of December at 1.30 in Wheeler Hall. Uh, tickets are £15 for three courses, including tea and coffee and Christmas and Christmas gift. Um, tickets are available at the back. Since we kind of came up with this idea, you think we might be selling drugs. People have gone crazy. Um, even weeks before these have gone on sale, we have been, people have been trying to bang down the doors. Uh, so we're hopeful it should be a very successful parish venture. Um, so please... Uh, do uh, try and get your hands on a ticket if you can act fast um, while you still can get one and last of all having spoken about the, uh, the virtue of hope it is my hope I will see you all at coffee last two weeks have been going well um, so I, I, I don't think we need to put the fear of God in you anymore I think that already worked last couple of weeks so please uh, do join us for coffee uh, at Wheeler Hall after this Mass um, and get to know one another and help support the parish. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. <laughs>